thing, you'd like to come and come in here in the sanctuary and join us. Those of you who are in here, if you'd like to go ahead and stand to your feet if you're able as we begin.
God is here. And so do you right now. If, you, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're sensing the presence of God. God can do anything. I, I didn't receive a word from the Lord on this, what I'm about to say. What I do know about this as I concentrate on the Lord is this. History is history. And uh, what time will show, what time will show, we may not even be here to see it, but time will show that the church not only existed during this virus, but it thrived and it went on and it grew and God. And that, that's the way history proved. It's not that I got a word, but it, God looks long. We look immediate. We look like what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and that's to our fault today. But God looks legacy. He, he builds that way. And if we would get God's sight on some certain issues, even in our own house, you would see that God's going to, it's going to be okay. We're with God. Amen. And if we fix our eyes on Jesus, all this stuff on this, this earth, just it's, it's so dim and dismal. And uh, that's why we need a, something bigger, something stronger, and something mightier that we look towards today. So, Father, we're in your presence now. And we thank you, Father, for the hand of God upon this family. We come together, Lord, as a family on Sunday mornings, Lord. We miss each other when we're not able to do that. And we thank you, God, for the family coming home today, being blessed. We say welcome, and not only welcome to the, the, the saints around us, but we thank you, God, that we say welcome, Holy Spirit. Continue to move and uh, abide in us, Lord, and through us and work through us today. Thank you, Father, for the hand of God upon us today. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to keep looking at Jesus, our source, the one that has us today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're uh, facing something that uh, right now on screen or here in the beautiful congregation, the mighty congregation of Living Faith Church, that you just have a need, I want you to lift your hand towards heaven because I'm going to agree with you right now at this moment today that God's going to be that way maker, the deliverer right now. God, God will make a way. God loves you. There's nothing that he wouldn't do to get to you right now, and he does. He, he moves towards you right now as your hands are lifted. Your hands are lifted here. Father, would you begin to touch and minister to every hand that's lifted? There's a need greater than I can accomplish on this earth. And money can't buy it. Um, a talent, Lord, as good as I am, Lord, as good as we are, we kind of behave. We're not going to get it that way. We need the hand of God upon our children, upon our lives today, upon our health today. Answer every prayer right now. And see, see to it, God, that we even testify in the coming days that God met me at this very moment. And God saw me through. If God before you, who can be against you today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are for us today, not against us. God runs towards you right now. God's hand, again, is not short. It's very long. It's reaching in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I feel the spirit of God in this church right now, don't you? I think of people. Yes, yes. I think of people. We've seen Waymaker one more time. You're just going to be assured right now. You're going to be assured that God is going to make a way where there seems to be. Would you make it a testimony, a cry, that you are the Waymaker as we sing this song out loud, out strong? Let's sing it our best. Let's give God our best right now. Right now.
communion by way of the love. Amen. This morning we're going to take communion. I'm inviting the uh, back row to come first and sequencing on it. Somebody needs help around you opening the cup. They're going to wave because those cups are a little bit hard at times. But if you're joining me online also, you can grab some bread, grab something, grab some juice. Let's take communion together. The mighty Martin Tuttle is going to lead us today in uh, our, our family time of uh, just taking communion today. Thank you, Brother Mark, for coming. Facebook notice from a church back in Pennsylvania that we came from, and we said it's Communion Sunday this Sunday, and they do communion every first Sunday. But then, as I thought about it, I realized it's every Sunday is Communion Amen. Sunday at Living Faith, Amen. And, and I think that's a good thing because when we do communion, we are remembering what God has done for us. You know, we just sang how He was the waymaker promise keeper. And our communion is a remembrance of that. When he died on the cross, when he allowed his body to be broken, to be whipped by a whip with nine ends on it, and a sword thrust in his side, his body was broken, but it was broken for us. It was broken so that we could have a relationship with God. The Bible teaches very clearly that, you know, because we are sinners, that that relationship is broken, but because of the redemption of Jesus Christ, that repairs that uh, broken relationship with Jesus. So as we take the bread together, let's remember, you know, our past life before Jesus that was broken and sinful, but yet our current relationship with God Lord, thank you. Thank you for being, allowing yourself to be brought up on the cross. Thank you for allowing for your body to be broken, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that this communion never become just something we do every Sunday, but rather it is always a remembrance of what you have done for us. Let us partake together. Likewise, the juice or the wine, I guess they did back then, but now we use juice, represents the blood that, that was spilled. The, the, the blood, blood of Jesus Christ, that number one, washes away our sins, but also number two, heals us. And so, you know, Pastor, pray for those who need healing. And this is a remembrance that God will heal you. He says, I came that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. And so this is in remembrance of the abundant life that Jesus Christ gives us. Lord, thank you for spilling your blood, Lord, so that we can be saved, so that we can be healed, so that we can be whole. In Jesus' name, let us partake together. declarations on the screen today, this morning. If, if you mean these, you say them out loud. Amen. We declare who we are in the Lord. On three, one, two, three. I am strong and mighty. I am not my past. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am free. I am blessed. I am generous. I am well able. I am empowered. I am chosen. I am called. I am a masterpiece of God. I am a child of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, next week, I'm going to ask Ricky to lead that. I didn't prepare, but I really want him to lead this for us next week. I think he's going to do a great job because 
Okay. Hey, Brad, I need a microphone, right? There we go. So, Ricky, next week, get ready where we are. And there we go. Where'd you go? Amen. Right here. Yeah, there you are. Give it, man. Let's lead, lead these for us today. Make it a charge. And then we're blessed, right, everybody? Amen. Thank you, Mom. Very good. Um, God bless you. And then uh, rest your bodies. You're going to see a, a great announcements right now about what's happening, especially this week at Living Faith Church. Make sure that you uh, get tuned in on that.
you're not awake now, you are now. Right? After that song. It's a good song, right? All right. Welcome our first time guests. Let's go ahead and welcome them. Come on, big, big. Okay. Welcome home. It's good to see you guys. What a blessing uh, to see you. We're living faith, church faith that you can see as we gather, grow, and go. go. Let's welcome our online audience. Also, Facebook Live, later on YouTube, and then later on our website. Thank God for it. Do you have your message notes handy? You're going to need them. They're right there, drop down on the screen. But if you don't have them, raise your hand. We have a couple of people Ready to get, get those? Yeah, a couple. Here we go. We got one precious lady. There we are. Right there. He's ready to serve you. What a blessing that he is. Uh, precious over here. He's going to help us. Yes. He's going to get help. And there you are. Keep your hand up a little bit. It, don't get don't get too tired. Keep that hand up. They'll get to you right now. If you could check in online right now, uh, you can find out your indicator, especially if you're on Facebook. Twitter probably has it also. I don't know about Instagram, but you can go and say, I'm at Living Faith Church. Say something of faith. You should witness with your phone. Jesus said, be my witnesses. And no easier way than to witness on your social media to tell others about Christ. The Bible says this, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you on that great day before the Father, the angels, and so forth. And, and I don't want God to be ashamed of me, so I want to witness today, amen? And there's nothing like just putting a blurb up there that I'm in church or something, a smiley face or an emoji or whatever you have. Go ahead and witness. It's always good, yes? Amen? And if you could, invite a couple of people uh, to your social media page to share the message. We're gonna, you can duplicate this message and share it. It's good news. You don't know what will happen with somebody hearing the message today. It could minister to them. How many testimonies do we have of people saying, you know what, God, God met me right there and ministered to me because I was able to watch it online. And that's happening all over the place because of what we got going on. So like us on Facebook, it's the Living Faith SA. And uh, you'll find us, that's our, our tagline, I guess. So I wanted to begin a new series with you, and it's called the Miracle Series. And um, the Miracle Series is dedicated to all those that need a miracle. And all those that are being challenged right now in this present time. So somebody shout, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Uh, the, the, the first, you know what? Lucy always helps me with this by kind of reminding me of stuff. But citywide prayer meeting tomorrow in our sanctuary is coming together. And... Churches pray for 10 days all over our city. We're hosting it this coming Monday night tomorrow. I pray that you come back. I pray that you'll be here Monday night so we can pray for our city. How many know our world needs prayer? Our lives need prayer. If you come with a great need, I know God will answer you. We've got to seek God. Where are we looking right now for our answers? Come back to the house of God. Our worship team will lead us in worship. We'll pray. Several pastors will be here from the city. And they'll lead in prayer, and we thank God uh, that that's able to happen. And thank God you can come on a Monday night. Give God your best. Give them your second day of the week, because the first day of the week was Sunday morning. Right, everybody? Amen. All right. You ready for something? Oh, yeah. Last thing I need to tell you about. Thank God for your mission giving. Four Square Missions Press sent me a beautiful letter, and I got, went ahead and put those on our, our right there, our PowerPoint slide that you have. And um, this is the Vida group, if, you, if you'll show me that slide. These are young people in Latin America that received a Vida book that is in their language printed. Your mission dollars support this endeavor. Every month, we send them a check, for Square Missions Press, because of your generosity. They're training leaders in their own language on how to reach people within their own communities. Um, during a worldwide pandemic, God is still using the local church lands all over in every nation to be the light of Jesus. And he's doing it in villages and so forth. Um, show me the next slide. This next slide is the Congo uh, area in Africa. And because of a partnership that we have, Four Square Missions Press is now able to give Bibles printed in the native language to every African pastor. And you may get a Bible today at Walmart. Pretty easy to find. There might even be some extra ones somewhere in the church here. But in Africa, it's a royalty. In this village, it, it, it's something that you must be rich because you have a Bible. And that's something. And we, we don't even. But these are pastors, pastor's wife, it looks like. And they're holding up the word of God. And they're saying, thank you for the, your generosity. We're able to give uh, something away that's a, not even a luxury to us, but it's a luxury to them. And because of your practical giving, God is reaching the world. And I just want to thank you. And Foursquare Missions Press thanks you. Amen. Doesn't that touch your heart? Amen. God's a big God. For God so loved the world. He just didn't love America. He didn't love Living Faith Church. He loved the world and he wanted to do something about it. 
and he's reaching people. Let's look at our first scripture in Psalm 77. Do you have your hand out? How many need a miracle? Amen. Amen. And so today it says this. This is our theme scripture for the, the series all month long today. And it says, it's here in your presence. And thank God a moment ago as the worship team led, you, I felt the presence of God. And as the word is being read, we're going to feel the presence of God today in your sanctuary. And thank God for many sanctuaries. You are a sanctuary now, right? Amen. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is within you. And so wherever you go, you're a carrier of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, it was just in a temple, but now you're the tent of God today. You carry the message of God. Where I've learned your ways, for your holiness is revealed in everything I do. The Lord, you're the one. He's it. Amen. The only one. The great and glorious God. You display your wonders and, and what? Miracles and power that only the nations can acknowledge today. So I'm inviting Jesus today to steal the show. Go ahead and take over. Show up, Lord, and show off because this is your day, right? Everybody, we serve a God of miracles, and uh, the best is yet to come. I, I think it's a good time to ask God to take the limits right now off of us. Let's pray today. Holy Spirit, come now. Thank you for the spirit of the living God. We're here in this room. We're here on screen, and we're hearing the message of God today. And some of us in this room today... All of us are at that point today. Either we're getting there, we've been through it, or we need one now. We need a miracle, God. Uh, and, and so we, we're not ashamed to say, Jesus, I need a miracle. Do it again in my life, God. Do it again in our lives today as a church family. Thank you for the miracle coming to Living Faith Church. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Turn towards your neighbor. You know how we roll at Living Faith Church. T -t -t Turn towards your neighbor and say, your miracle is on the way. You on screen, if you, you don't have anybody, you're looking at your phone, you can talk to yourself. You, nobody's going to think you're weird right now. You may have a second choice. Go ahead. And you, nobody was there on the second choice either. You're telling yourself again. Amen. Make sure they're not watching you. <laughs> the neighbor's not looking at you. Talk to yourself today. Amen. I, I want to define a miracle. And a miracle is simply this. On, you'll see it. A miracle is an extraordinary event manifesting itself as a divine intervention in human affairs. And God will intervene right now in our families. God can pull up right now in the driveway of our home. God can right now pull up right now into that child's life that you've been praying for, that son's life, amen. Daughter, amen. He's pulling up right now. A miracle's needed. How about your health right now? Yeah, you need it. You got the bad report this week, whatever it might be. We're believing God for full restoration upon people today. Come on. There it is, yeah. It's coming down the aisle. Yeah, Jesus is touching people today. Sometimes we don't like to talk about our fear and that we need a miracle because we fear so much and we need fear over faith today. El favorito. Some of us have that plate. When you go to that Mexican restaurant, they have that el favorito. And it's usually, man, mine is that it's an enchilada. It's a tamale. Amen. Even when tamales are out of season, they still make them there at that restaurant. And they give, me a puffy, they give me a puffy taco and some rice and beans. And I like my beans charro. I don't like that refried mix. I mean, sometimes refried's okay. Thank, Sister Aurora, thank you for sending me. You got me a taco this morning. I'm full of love today. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's why you ought to come to Living Faith Church. Because you get free tacos, right? <laughs> Amen. El favorito. This is one of my favorite el favorito miracles today that Jesus did. And so I want to share it with you. It's a miracle. I need a miracle. In, in Luke chapter 18, on your screen, on your handout today, here you have it. It says, and Jesus and his followers arrived at Jericho. Jericho was a very important city, a lot of history. It was a large city that had been rebuilt now in Jesus' time. And there was a blind man. In the harmony of the Gospels, the Mark, the Gospel of Mark, that we, call the, we have a name for this blind beggar, and his name's Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. And so we know his name was Barnabas, and he's sitting by the roadside. That's what a blind man can only do. And he heard the crowd approaching, and he hears the rumbling. How many know the blind can still hear? Yeah, even when your eyes are closed, that thing that wakes you up out of sleep today. And, and the crowd was approaching, and he asked, what is all this commotion about? You know, he's saying, and they're saying, it's Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. It says that the blind beggar Bartimaeus shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He's praying, show me mercy. 
And those in front of the crowd, Jesus had an entourage and they were traveling with Jesus. And they say, theologians say, you know, there was a lot of people and they warned him to be quiet. They tried to shush him. And the blind beggar screamed even louder. <laughs> Do y'all ever know somebody that doesn't have any volume control? Have you ever met somebody? They get all crazy in a restaurant. You're up there trying to have a, okay, you know, this is going to, you're going to get fired right now. You're going to lose. What? <laughs> <laughs> they start throwing chairs, right? <laughs> they have no control of their, uh, their, their high talkers, right? You got to calm those people down. Hey, everybody's looking at us right now because you're talking. Like, would you shut up? <laughs> they like the drama. <laughs> How many of you know loud talkers in your front yard? The neighbors start looking out, right? <laughs> the police come over, right? He's a loud talker. He got louder. Nothing was going to shut this. Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Look at what happens. Jesus, suddenly, Jesus stopped. The king of the universe stopped. And he told those in nearby, bring, bring that man over to me. And then they brought him. I think Jesus would have went to him, but, but there was so many people around him. It wasn't that he was trying to act like he was all that. No, he needed somebody to go get him because there was so many people around him. But he was going to get to, and they brought the man to Jesus and he, he asked him, what is it that you want me to do for you? That's so precious to me about Jesus saying that. I, I believe there's hope for you this morning. There's hope for you this morning. What, 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 what hope now you have hope because Jesus is asking you, what, what can I do for you right now? What, where can I bring hope to you in this message right now? Those that are hearing, those that are watching right now on your phone right now, God hasn't forgotten about you today. He's remembering you today. And he said, Lord, he immediately knew he was. He, was, he could do anything. Lord, you're the boss. He said, please, I want to see again. He saw once in his life and he wanted to see again. He didn't have that gift of vision anymore. And Jesus said, now you will see. Receive your sight at this moment. For your faith has given your sight, and it's not only given sight, but it's given you new life, salvation. Light came not only in his eyes, but light came to his heart, right? Glory, 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 glory. And it says that at that very moment, he shouted again. And he, this man knew how to shout. He shouted loud praise to God. And the result, he said, now I'm going to follow Jesus. Because that's the appropriate thing to do after Jesus saves you. After Jesus gives you a new life, after Jesus blesses you, you have to follow him today. Don't forget about Jesus, right? And then the crowd saw what had happened, and they erupted in shouts of praise. Man, the whole, the whole company got a hold of it, right, everybody? This morning, I want to break down the story. And because I'm Mexican, I love pizza. And so I'm going to break this down like a pie. You know, we're going to cut it into six pieces. They're going to be big pieces, but we're going to be able to take a piece of the pizza and we're going to look at each piece right now and we're going to look at it and unpack it today. Amen. And we're going to eat God's word today, right? It's good today. Number one is this. The blind man's problem was the first slice. Yeah, there, there's problems today and we see them at 530 on the news every time. If you get, I got to get ready for the news, you get set up. Don't, don't bother me right now. Amen. And what's incredible about our time now that we've gotten it, we've gotten even more advanced that now we have news 24 seven, a notification comes all the time. Well, this just happened Well, uh, okay. He landed. Okay. Uh, Afghanistan. Okay. What's happening next? And you live on, on news all the time. And there, there's problems every time the notifications come. What does she want? Why did they text me? You know, I got to answer them back. Were, uh, so the blind man's problem was, he, of course, he had no sight and he had no he had the memory that he used to be able to see. And that was good to him. But he lived in darkness and he was reduced to living in darkness. And sometimes I believe the pain in life can reduce us to things that we never thought we would be. Darkness comes upon us in our lives. Sometimes we have a, a secret this or that, a dark secret or how am I going to cope with this? And it's nobody knows but you have this coping mechanism that takes place whenever you're faced with the pressure and it's a darkness and it's an area of darkness in your life. I believe that we have a limitation on our future when we don't see all that God wants us to see. And we get dark in some areas and we've been limited in a time right now. One day I'm going to serve God after this virus passes, this pandemic passes. 
then, then I'll do what God's told me to do. And it's, it's put you on hold. I don't think that's the will of God. I, I, I seriously don't. I, I believe that you should be safe. That's real important. I learned that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but I believe it should not limit what you should do for God. Nothing should. We, we, we need to go on. We're, we're called living faith for a reason. We need to be a church called living faith, not secret living faith, not, not hiding out living faith. We're hidden living faith. No, we, we are, we're, we're not that sort of body today. And so what are we asking God next to show us today? Where are we getting our sources from so we can move upon God? And the way I look at it, there are no limits on God. There are limits on this earth, but if heaven comes to earth like a sloppy wet kiss, <laughs> then it's going to be okay. We can move out and do the things. I, I don't know too many people that, that, I don't know anyone that really that comes to the end of their life and they say something like, like this. I didn't make an impact on anybody or in anyone, but I'm okay with that. I don't know too many people like that because you know what happens when God gets within you? You want to make an impact. You want to make legacy. So when that stone is plunged into the water, that ripple effects begins to take effect. And you have something that God has touched your heart today. And God doesn't want to just leave it within you. He wants to spread the ripple effect upon people today that your legacy will happen. There are small acts of kindness that all of us can do because people, the world still has problems, big problems. And right now, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better, but the church needs to be stronger. You need to be stronger. You can still love people. Irma and I are so grateful for a great church like you. I don't know how Sophie Cochran orchestrated it, but Irma and I, during that time that we had COVID and we were quarantined, and they maybe they didn't do this for you, but they did it for us, so don't get mad at me. People brought food. People brought food over and they blessed us and they stood far off, which is OK. I wanted them to. I had bad breath. <laughs> I, but those small acts of it was a lot for people. I know it was. But there's always a text. There's always love. There's always something that you can do. That's why you need a small group, because you're going to have a problem one day. A small group that's, that's at this church, that's covered by this church, that you get involved in. Because you're going to have a problem one day that you're going to need somebody to know about. That's why you should be in a small group every week, even if it's on Zoom today, right? Everybody, who is addressing the needs of your life today? Is it voices? It's the, is it this? I need to go after this that I see on my screen to get my answer? Or is it the people of God? Is it a church? Is it the, the, the God that we serve today? Amen. No matter how difficult the situation is today, even in the world right now, what we're facing today, the, there's a miracle God. The God of miracles can still intervene. And he's waiting to because he loves big problems like this. He's just waiting for us to show up today. The second slice is this. The second thought is this. The blind man's prayer. Notice he prays. And though he was blind, Bartimaeus could see more than that, that he could see more that, that Jesus was a great teacher. He knew that Jesus was a great healer also, right, everybody? Amen. Invite Jesus into your big problem and make it a prayer situation. Pray to God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the, the word, right? I need to help some of y'all in this room today. Yeah. Uh, hear the different sound in the broadcast. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the word of God. And if you're hearing the word of God, you're not going to live in fear so much. You're going to be cautious, but you won't be in fear. The blind man prayed. It's a, an amazing thing that prayer has a way when there's a great need in your life. I don't know about you, but you start remembering things. Remember when I wasn't sick? Remember when we had provision? Remember when we were all serving the Lord? You, you start remembering. Remember when I would use my gift for God? Remember I, remember, I recall those things, God, that I once did. I, I want to return to those things. It says of the prodigal son that he remembered, he recalled, he came to his senses and he went back to his father's house. Big problems, big prayer, because we have a big God that can answer our, our needs today. Amen. We pray and we remember the God that we serve today. Prayer shouldn't always be the last option. It should be the first option. 
It should always, this is the first thing. Before I get the second opinion from the doctor, before we go to the lawyer, before we, uh, we go to God, and we're a family that does that, and you do that today. You bring an altar to your children, and you do that. He called out once, and they tried to shush him. And he called out even louder today. And I, I believe that Jesus can still heal people today. There's a God of miracles. You're a family in this room. You might be a mini family, a single parent mom family, single parent dad. You're a single adult in this room, married couple today. It's time to call upon the name of the Lord. I don't care your opinions about the vaccine or what you didn't do or what you did do and what was going on. I don't care about any of that because we've been so divided as a, a body, as a church. We've been so divided in issues like this. And I knew it was going to divide us when it hit today. You know what I care about? That you fix your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. You choose to do what you choose, what you feel is right for you and your house and what you feel for your life today. But I don't think we should take our eyes off Jesus during this time. We should all have that unity today. We should all respect each other and give each other grace on what we believe and not shove each other's opinions down each other's throat. But we should... Fix our eye. Would you just go? Would you just shut up and go with me to Jesus? Would you just fix, let's look at Jesus today. Because if we look at Jesus, I, I don't want you to quit. This man did not quit. Blind Bartimaeus, he was resolved. Resol this is my moment. Jesus is passing by. I have my moment. Heaven is passing by. I got to get a hold of heaven today. And so I come against fear right now. I come against failure, I come against fatigue right now, and I push it back. Would you push back with me? Yes. Come on, give God a five-second praise break right now. We're pushing it back. We're praying right now. God, answer us. Hear our prayer, Lord. Yeah. I'm about to, I'm about to run around this church. with, with my. I'm going to put my mask back on, though, when I run, because I... <laughs> Third slice, amen. The blind man's praise. He had a shout. He had a shout. We just shouted, right? He could not see, but he could shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, shh, shh. They dog whispered him. Caesar Melanch. <laughs> nah, that dog bit back. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. No, he shouted even louder. It was a desperation, man, in this... God moves with the desperation. How desperate are you to get healed? How much are you looking for that financial miracle that you need in your house? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking for my healing. I'm looking for my, my children to come back to the Lord. I'm doing everything I can. I'm not going to relax at this moment. The time is too precious, amen. He kept shouting for mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, Lord, on my life. Have mercy on my children, right? He kept, and God is moved by somebody that needs mercy. I'm so glad we love a God like that today. He doesn't stand back and he doesn't say, you know, that's not for me. No, he runs towards mercy. I believe a shout creates momentum. It gives you home field advantage. The Dallas Cowboys would have won if they would have played in Texas Stadium. They would have won. No doubt about it. That kicker would have made both those field goals. But they, were, they, they, they almost won. We almost had them. Home field advantage. Some of y'all Texan fans, come on. Uh, home field advantage. We can, we, can, we can differ on something else, but we can, we can agree on this one. When you shout, it creates home field advantage. There's a momentum. They're shouting, amen. Something's going on. Something's happening right now. See, but that's why you shout, man, in the middle of a trial. That's why you shout the devil out of your home. I shout because you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. I'm going to shout, amen. You don't know what, what I fought, amen. You don't know where I've gotten to. In that, I've gotten here because of the grace of God. I, I, I don't have to do this or that. You've got to praise God at this moment today. We've got to thank God today. Praise with all that you have today. The, I, I heard this years ago, and it, never, it changed my life. The spirit of expectancy is the breeding ground of miracles. I expect to be healed. I expect that we'll reach people for Christ. I expect, I expect the blessings of God. And when you expect that, you shout and the breeding ground of miracles start happening in your life today. The shout, that shout opened up the pathway of Jesus, pathway of healing, the pathway of victory that God was his deliverer today. Uh, don't, don't let fear of the unknown 
But what's going to happen tomorrow? Take away your shout. Don't, don't let it take away. Don't let it redoubt. Hold on. Hold fast to your praise. That's what this blind man did. The fourth one is this. Jesus is passing by. Here's the headliner. Now we have Jesus enter the picture, which I so love. Things begin to change. That blind man would begin his day as normal. And it was bad. He was blind all the time. So they set him out on the side of the road. It was another day of begging for him. His routine. I don't want you to miss God in the routine of coming back to church. I don't want you to miss God in the routine of reading your Bible. I don't want you to miss God in the routine of maybe even going to work. Jesus never hid away from a person that had a need. He never said, I don't have time for them. I'm going to go this way. They're coming. The problem's coming this way. No, he went straight on to the problem. Jesus passes by. And, and so thank God for it. We must be a merciful church because God is a merciful God. Jesus is full of mercy. You must be full of mercy towards people today. That's why the church should be full of mercy. We're a church of mercy today. Amen. There are seasons of darkness that come upon every uh, land. I love the seasons. It's about to change. Isn't it cooler now in the morning a little bit? Especially you guys that work outside. You do stuff outside. Thank God for the season changing. I believe it's a direct reflection of what's happening spiritually. We are facing a season of change. It's God is going to give us his best season now. Amen. He's bringing light. He's bringing hope. He's bringing the love back that he needed to bring back so long ago to our people. When Jesus passes by, it's because we serve. He shows up with service. And you serving people is the way Jesus passes by. And so I'm grateful for that. This past week, these past weeks, we've served the community. When we gave out almost 100 backpacks, at a drive through Jesus was there. Cars passed by, and we were there handing out backpacks. God was there. When we waved at over 2,000 cars at, all the way from Marbach, this parking lot, all the way back to 410, and asked them that God would bless them with signs and say, have a happy school year, have a blessed school year, Jesus loves you, go Mustangs, amen. They needed to have that encouragement. And all that was necessary so people would have hope in their lives. They would see a sign. Leonard Ziegler that was holding the sign when the parents were coming out of the parking lot so boldly, amen, Leonard's a man of God holding that sign that said, God bless you. When they would look and see Leonard holding the sign, Leonard told me that I could see the parents' countenance change. They would read the sign and all of a sudden they would go, there's hope. There's a church next door to us that's praying for our students, that's loving. God shows up in the serve. God passes by when people serve him, Amen. That's why tonight our young people, God's going to be with them because the Ramoses are equipping our youth, our young people. If you're a teenager, you know a teenager, bring them tonight to our, ser to our youth service because Jesus is going to pass by. Amen. This coming Wednesday, Juan and B will lead our outreach. And as we lead people to Christ, as we witness and we share the good news, we give gifts away because that's what we do. God will show up in a community. Join me at 7 p.m. to do that today. So when leaders serve, Jesus passes by. The fifth one is this. The fifth one is this. Uh, Jesus took time. Hey, how many do I have to fill in the blank? Or how many are there for me? I forgot. How many do I got? I got one. I only have six. So do you know what that means? We're at five. That's good news, right? I'm one away. Just one away. And we're going to beat the Baptist to the salad buffet. Amen. We're going to eat salads today. Amen. <laughs> Jesus took time. Theologians say, man, there were thousands around Jesus. That's why he couldn't get to the man. Bring the man here. Bring the man here. No, there was thousands. And Jesus stopped for this guy. He stopped for a beggar. He didn't stop for, the, he didn't stop for somebody that had a little bit of money. You know? He stopped for somebody that was begging for money. And that gives me hope. Doesn't it? How could a God almighty... All powerful, all knowing, like that, stop for somebody like me. That, 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 that's incredible. God, how could you notice somebody like me? And when you have that sort of heart, God not only notices you, he stops for you. That, that can wait. Nothing could stop Jesus' journey to Jerusalem because he was going to get crucified. But he was on his way and he had an appointment and he had an appointment to save all of mankind. But he had to stop for this man asking for mercy. I think there's a key for you on how Jesus will stop for you. If you cry out for mercy today, if you cry out for help, Jesus is present. He's, he's going to be present. He's going to be act the God that loves all people.
people will love you enough to stop for you today. And so God stops for us today. You may not have the sight to be seen right now. Is he going to stop for me? Is he going to stop for me? But when he hears you, when he stops, everything changes at that moment for you today. You'll never be the same once Jesus stops for you today. Amen. I think sometimes we don't get our answers, especially as God followers, because we simply don't ask. Have you asked God to bring you a husband, young lady that's single in this room? Have you really asked God to 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 bring that lifelong relationship to you? I'm going to look at the clock because some of y'all are smiling at me. <laughs> Have you asked God to really heal you? Sometimes our self-sufficiency, uh, we don't want to ask God, even the simple things God will do and God will help you. I know that's not you. I'm preaching to the church down the street today. They say the value an object of an object is estimated by the price that somebody's willing to pay for it. And I had a bottled water, but I forgot to bring it up here. So I'm not going to stop now. But this is the bottled water. How much would you pay for this water? It's worth about a dollar at Valero. It's worth about, uh, bottled water, worth about a dollar, man. At Valero, you can buy those cheap ones at a dollar. Yeah, they're still good if they're cold, right? If you're real thirsty, if you're real thirsty, man, you'll pay maybe, man, I'd, if I was real thirsty, I'd pay five bucks. Now, for that little water, I'd, I'd pay for it because I was thirsty. But how much would it be worth for you if your child was dehydrated? Your, your son or daughter, your little one that couldn't go get, they, they had to, your grandchild. How much would you pay for that water? You know how much God valued you? He sent his only son, Jesus, to die for you. The prince of heaven died for you. How much, how much more valuable? You ought to see yourself in that light that God would stop. Not because we're worthy, not because we're all that, but God loves you. That makes you worthy. That makes your children worthy today, amen? How valuable you are to God. How valuable you are to God today. Number six, here we go, the final one. Jesus gave him what? He gave him what? A miracle. A, miracle. A, a blind man now could see. He was saved and he followed Jesus. He followed Jesus to freedom. He was, he was going to work out some stuff just like all of us do. But when we follow Jesus, all that junk falls off. And here we go. We're, we follow Jesus into freedom. I'm going to get set free from that Egypt, from that thing in the past. I'm going to get that, that reproach that I used to be ashamed of. And I notice when he follows Jesus, here's what happens. People glorify God. They, he shouted, but then everyone else. And you know what that? It takes the focus off you and it puts it back on Jesus. That's a real miracle when people glorify God. Right, everybody? Yes. We're, all, we're all blind beggars. We're all, all of us in this room are at one point or the other. We're going to be blind. We're going to be begging like, like that. Maybe not with our sight, but we're going to, God, how do I see myself out of this thing? How, how do I go beyond this hopeless situation? How do I get better in my hell? How do I, how do I now get back to the, what God's called me to do? We're all that way at times. That's why I love amazing grace. How sweet the sound Jesus saved a wretch like me. Once I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see. Lift your hands right now in the presence of God. We still ourselves before an almighty God that's holy, but loves us. A holy God that loves us and comes close to us today. Thank you, Lord. We lift our hands towards a holy God right now. Thank you, Lord. I want you to receive your miracle right now. There's no better atmosphere right now. Whether you're here or you're on a screen right now, you can receive. God's not a respecter. He's not, he has no distance right now. Father, you're the God of miracles. Now speak 
important to the people of God. Today, your name is greater than any pandemic, greater than any fear, the uncertainty of time right now. You're greater because you're a God of miracles. Help us to praise you no matter what we face today. Thank you. Show show us right now, Lord, we bring our faith, our trust in you. If you need a miracle right now in this room today, this is what you must do. You're praying. You're asking God. Yeah, get your miracle. Get some right now. Whatever it might be. Touch the people of God today. Yeah, Lord. Now believe it. Blind Bartimaeus believed it. He believed with all of his heart that Jesus. And I believe with all my heart. I'm going to get mine right now. I don't know about you. But I don't want to take so much of the attention. But in this moment right now, you get yours right now. Irm and I are going to get Irm and I are in unity about what we're believing. Yes, our harvest. I believe it, Lord. I believe it. Now you trust God. It may look a little bit differently because when you get God involved, he, he, he has a way of just giving you the best. And his, your, your, your bet, the situation might look better. Even than you ever imagined. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're answering God's people. They're having clarity. They're getting wisdom right now. A miracle is taking place. As I continue to pray right now, stay with me. Stay with me on this one right now. Thank you. I want, I want to pray right now. Uh, God would fill you with his presence that you would never be alone. Now, many of you felt lonely. You're on screen or you're here in this room today. They say that life is a vapor in the book of James. That means before you know it, it will be here and it will be gone. And that person I spoke about a moment ago, I've never met anybody that says, I, I, I'm okay if I didn't make an impact, if I didn't do anything. The only way that you'll make an impact on the legacy of faith upon people is if you truly have God within you. Because God's eternal. And an eternal God wants to inhabit you, wants to come into your life today and change that. Today, I'm asking if you're surrendered to Christ. If you're not, you have this moment today. And I want to introduce you to the Lord right now by a, by a prayer. I won't embarrass you. I'll see your hand right now where it's lifted on screen today or in person today. If you're here in this room, lift your hand high towards the Savior that loves you and say, lead me in that prayer, Pastor, right where you're at. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, hands all over. Hands all over. You can put them down. God bless you. We're going to pray this simple prayer today. Living faith, you never pray alone. We pray together. Let's pray this prayer out loud. Heavenly Father, hear my prayer. Take away my blindness so I can see the light. Light inside. Light in my sight. Thank you for a new beginning. Forgiving of my sins. All my sins, Jesus, you took upon the cross. And you died for me. But you rose for me also. And I will never die. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's celebrate life right now at Living Faith Church. Life. <laughs> worship team, would you come right now? Worship team, as you're coming. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. God is doing something. Amen. If you're in this house and you need to lift your hand and you haven't gotten this book, or you need to get it, I would advise you to get it. It's called The New Believer's Handbook. It's our free book for you. Jill Tuttle will uh, serve you and she'll bless you. And she'll tell you about or even our great class. It's called um, Growing in Faith. And it's taught by Diana Ruiz today. You can take that class and be part of it at 9 a.m. Worship team, are you coming today? Here you come. You're going to lead me out today. Thank you, guys. And uh, make sure you get that. If you're on screen today, we'll mail this to you, but you got to contact us. You can do that a couple of ways. Messenger, you can email us. You can send us a text. All that is there in front of you, and you can have that. And we, we'd love to give that to you today. Amen. The final thing I need to tell you about is, again, as I announced this past uh, a moment ago, Be the Church is this Wednesday night. Uh, the community that is living in fear right now needs to have a church that shows up. We'll be safe. We'll do all the protocols that need to be necessary. All those are real important right now, especially right now. But I also need to keep reaching. And I need to be that community that shows light. So if you want to be part of that, join me at 7 p.m. along with Juan and B as they lead us. Um, and the student center will gather, we'll pray, and then we'll go out and serve our community as we always do once a month doing Be the Church. And that's a blessing. Amen. Thank God for it today. Let's go ahead and receive our tithe and offering. I want to thank you for our generosity. I told you a little bit about that through Foursquare Missions Press, above and beyond that. And thank God how you do that today. So if you have your gift today, would you hold it in your hand? This morning, um, last night, a lot to do. Um, 
we gave and thank God for it. We were able to use our phone with the 77977 keyword Living Faith Church, upper ca- ca- uppercase, lowercase. However you want to do it, as long as you put Living Faith, it'll come back to you and give you the prompts that you need. It's a great way to give today. Let me pray for you today as you give today. And as we sing the songs of faith, why don't you stand with me as we get ready to leave? We'll sing a song of faith out loud today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. God, you gave your best in the form of Jesus, the son. And we want to now do something that would give our best back to you. Our 10th, God, we thank you for above and beyond that. That's love, a love offering today. Bless the gift and the giver. And I declare over every believer today, um, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace. Thank God for the shalom peace of God. Right, everybody? God bless you as you sing the song of faith.